Hello everyone, welcome to online class of power system to subject. So previous classes we have seen about the causes of over voltage, traveling wave theory, wave equation, open circuited line, short circuited line, junction of lines of different natural impedances. So we are going to see today's class reflection, refraction coefficient, junction of cable and overhead lines. So uh, let us see what the definition of traveling wave. A traveling wave is a temporary wave that will create a disturbance. Uh, that disturbance is created only for a very short period, maybe few microseconds. Uh, but it will cause a much disturbance in the transmission line. So transient wave will be set up in the transmission line due to switching and due to faults and due to lightning. Traveling wave plays a major role in knowing the voltages and currents at all the points in the power system. And they'll also help in designing the insulators, protective equipment, insulation of terminal equipment and overall insulation coordination. So various specification of traveling wave we have seen crest, front, tail. Okay, what is crest? Crest is the maximum amplitude of the wave. Front is the portion of the wave before the crest. And tail is the portion beyond the crest. Polarity of crest, uh, uh, voltage and value we are going to say by seeing the voltage and current. And time. So transmission line will be a distributed parameter. It is not a lump parameter. We are uh, assuming here that it is a uh, it will have resistance, inductance, and capacitance. All are distributed throughout the length of the transmission line. When a transmission line is suddenly connected to a voltage source by closing of a switch, whole of the line is not energized at once, but voltage does not ex uh, appear instantaneously at the other end because of presence of distributed constants, inductance and capacitance. So we are considering a long transmission line having, having a distributed parameters, inductance and capacitance, and it is divided into two small sections. S is the switch which is used for opening and closing of the surges for switching operation. So whenever switch is closed, inductance L1 will act as open circuit, capacitance C1 act as short circuit. At the same instant, voltage at the next section cannot be charged because the voltage across C1 is zero. So this is a diagram showing equivalent pi section of a transmission line. So unless the capacitor C1 is charged to some value, charging of capacitor C2 through L2 is not possible, uh, which will take some time. So same argument applies to the third section, fourth section and so on. Voltage at the section will build up gradually and this gradual build up of voltage over the transmission conductor can be regarded as though a voltage wave is traveling from one end to another end and the gradual charging of the voltage is due to associated current wave. So current wave which is accompanied by voltage wave steps up a magnetic field in the surrounding space. At junctions and terminations these waves will undergo reflection and refraction. The network has a large line and junction, the number of traveling waves initiated by single incident wave and will increase at a considerable rate as the wave splits and multiple reflections occurs. Total energy of the resultant wave cannot exceed the energy of the incident wave. So in transmission line, parameters L, C and R are uniformly distributed over the length of the line. For steady state operation, they can be represented as lump parameters, but transient behavior of the transmission line, they must be represented by distributed parameters. 50 hertz supply and short transmission line sending and current equals the receiving and current and the change in voltage from sending end to receiving end is smooth. This is not so when transmission line is subject to a some transient. So this is a long transmission line first figure check second is showing the equivalent pi section where we are having number of LNC combinations which S is there here applied voltage and load is there. So current traveling in the conductor is determined by the rate at which the charge flows into and out of the line. So I equal to dq by dt. So we have seen the equations for current voltages and at the end we have got the velocity uh, as uh, 3 into 10 power 8 meters per second after substitution of all the values. So this is the velocity of lights. This is the velocity of propagation of traveling wave over the overhead transmission line in, 
and in actual practice because of resistance and leakage of the lines velocity of traveling wave is slightly less than the velocity of the light so normally a velocity of approximately 250 milli per microsecond is assumed and it can be seen that velocity of these waves of the cables will be smaller than overhead lines because of permittivity term in the denominator open end line we have seen so we are considering a open line open end line open line that is receiving end will be open circuited here then we have derived the equations so we are uh, assuming here that electromagnetic energy is equal to electrostatic energy so e, e equal to iz that is v then we have uh, variation of voltage and current in an open ended line very very important students note on this one in short circuited line here receiving end will be short circuited and again uh, we are uh, equating the uh, electromagnetic energy and electrostatic energy writing the equations for voltage and current and drawing the variation of voltage and current in a short circuited line line terminate through a resistance we have seen okay that is uh, coefficient of refraction for voltage waves is r minus z by r plus z that is 1 we got it and um, coefficient of refraction for current wave also we got it as 1 for voltage wave it is 1 now let us start today's topic that is line connected to a cable a wave will travel over the line and enters the cable and since the wave looks into a different impedance it suffers reflection and refraction at the junction and the refra refracted voltage wave is given as v double dash is v into 2z2 by z1 plus z2 so other waves can be obtained uh can be obtained by 12.10 and 12 which we have seen earlier this one 10 this i double dash is uh, equal to i into 2z by r plus z and 11th one is v dash is equal to v into r minus z by r plus z so impedance of the overhead line and cable are approximately 400 ohms and 40 ohms respectively with these values it can be seen that the voltage entering the cable is v double dash is v into 2 into 40 by 40 plus 400 that is 2 by 11 v so it is about 20% of the incident voltage v it is for this reason that an overhead line will be terminated near a station by connecting the station equipment to the overhead line through a short length of underground cable besides the reduction in the magnitude of the voltage wave the steepness is also reduced because of the capacitance of the cable so reduction in steepness is very important because this is one of the factors for reducing the voltage distribution along the windings of the equipment while connecting the overhead line to a station equipment through a cable it is important to note that the length of the cable should not be very short otherwise successive refle reflections at the junction may result in piling up of voltage and the voltage at the junction may lead to may reach the incident voltage reflection and refraction coefficients reflection and refraction at a t junction we are considering a voltage wave is to be is traveling over the line we search impedance z1 when it reaches the junction it look it looks a change in impedance and therefore suffers reflection so this is a bifurcated line for which we are considering reflection and refraction let v2 double dash i2 double dash v3 double dash i3 double dash be the voltages and currents in the lines having such impedances z2 and z3 respectively since z2 and z3 form a parallel path as far as the surge wave is concerned v2 double dash is equal to v3 double dash is equal to v double dash therefore following relation will hold good that is v plus v dash is v double dash i equal to v by z1 i dash is v minus v dash by z1 i2 double dash is v double dash by z2 and i3 double dash is v double dash by z3 and i plus i dash is i2 double dash plus i3 double dash so substituting these values we are going to get as uh, Uh, v by z1 minus v dash by z1 equal to v double dash by z2 plus v double dash by z3. Substituting for v, da v dash is equal to v double dash minus v. So v by z1 minus v double dash minus v by z1 equal to v double dash by z2 plus v double dash by z3. Taking v double dash as common in one uh, by z1 plus one by z2 plus one by z3, v double dash is equal to two v by z1 by one by z1 plus one by z2 plus one by z3. So other quantities quantities also we can derive. 
let us see numerical a three phase transmission line has conductors 1.5 cm in diameter spaced 1 meter apart in equal in equilateral formation resistance and leakage uh, le resistance and leakage are uh, negligible calculate natural impedance of the line line current if a voltage wave of 11 kv travels along the line rate of energy absorption rate of reflection and the state and the form of reflection if the line is terminated through a star connected load of 1000 ohms per phase value of terminating resistance for no reflection and amount of reflected and transmitted power if the line is connected to a cable extension with inductance and capacitance per phase per centimeter of 0.5 into 10 power minus 8 henry and 1 into 10 power minus 6 microfarad respectively inductance per unit length is 2 into 10 power minus 7 log d by r that is log 100 by 0.75 is log 133.3 so this is natural logarithm here 4.89 is the value of this uh, uh, log 133.3 so total value is 9.78 into 10 power minus 7 henry per meter capacitance per phase per unit length is 2 pi epsilon by log d by r farad per meter That is 2 pi into 10 power minus 9 by 36 pi log d by r. So that is 1 by 18 into 10 power minus 9 by 4.89. That is 1.136 into 10 power minus 11. Natural impedance Zn is equal to root L by C ohms. L value is 9.78 into 10 power minus 7. C value is 1.136 into 10 power minus 11. So altogether we are going to get this value as 294 ohms. Line current is 11 into 10 power 3 by root 3 into 9, 294. That is 21.6 amps. third one we have to we are calculating voltage across the terminating resistance e double dash so since the terminating resistance is of higher value as compared to the value of the surge impedance of the line if the reflection is with a positive sign voltage across the terminating resistance e double dash is 2z2 e by z1 plus z2 where z1 is line surge impedance z2 is terminating impedance and e is equal to incident voltage e double dash is 2 into 11000 by root 3 into 1000 by 1294 that is 9.8 kilovolt therefore rate of power consumption is 3e double dash square by r megawatt that is 3 into 9.8 into 9.8 by 1000 into 1000 kilowatt 288 kilowatt is the answer reflected voltage e dash is z2 minus z1 by z2 plus z1 into e that is 1000 minus 294 by 1294 into 11 by root 3 kilovolt so that is coming as 3.465 kilovolt So rate of reflected energy equal to three into three point four six five square by two ninety four into thousand. That is one twenty one point eight kilowatt. In order that the incident wave when reaches the terminating resistance does not suffer reflection, terminating resistance should be equal to the surge impedance of the line. That is two ninety four ohms. Surge impedance of the cable is root L by C. That is root of point five into ten power minus eight by ten power minus twelve seventy point seven ohms. Refra refracted voltage is two into seventy point seven by two ninety four plus seventy point seven into eleven by root three. That is two point four six kilovolt. Reflected voltage is seventy point seven minus two ninety four by three sixty four point seven into eleven by root three. That is minus three point nine kilovolt. Refracted and reflected powers are respectively three into two point four six square by seventy point seven into thousand. That is two fifty six kilowatt. And three into nine three point nine square by two ninety four into thousand. That is one fifty five kilowatt. Let us see next numerical. A surge of fifteen kilovolt magnitude travels along a cable towards its junction with an overhead line. Inductance and capacitance of the cable and overhead line are respectively 0.3 milli henry, 0.4 microfarad, and 1.5 milli henry, 0.012 microfarad per kilometer. Find the voltage rise at the junction due to the surge. Let us see the solution. In this problem. The surge travels from the cable towards the overhead line, and hence there will be positive voltage deflection at the junction. Natural impedance of the cable is root of 0.3 into 10 power minus 3 divided by 0.4 into 10 power minus 6. That is root of 3 into 10 power minus 4 divided by 0.4 into 10 power minus 6. That is 27.38. Natural impedance of the line is under root 1.5 into 10 power minus 3 by 0.012 into 10 power minus 6. That is 353 ohms. Voltage rise at the junction is the voltage transmitted into the overhead line as the voltage is zero before the surge reaches, reaches the junction. E double dash is two into three fifty three into fifteen by three fifty three plus twenty seven. So answer we are going to get as twenty seven point eight seven kilovolt. Next numerical. A surge of hundred kilovolt traveling in a line of natural impedance six hundred ohms arrives at a junction with two lines of impedances eight hundred ohms and two hundred ohms respectively. 
find the surge voltages and currents transmitted into each branch line let us see the solution so the problem deals with the reflection at its t joint various natural impedances are z1 equal to 600 ohms z2 equal to 800 ohms z3 equal to 200 ohms surge magnitude is 100 kilovolt surge the surge as it reaches the joint suffers reflection and here the two lines are in parallel therefore the transmitted voltage will have the same magnitude and it is given as e double dash is 2 e by z1 by 1 by z1 plus 1 by z2 plus 1 by z3 that is equal to 2 into 100 by 600 divided by 1 by 600 plus 1 by 800 plus 1 by 200 that is equal to point 333 divided by 1.67 plus 1.25 plus 5 into 10 power minus 3 that is 42.04 kilovolt. Transmitted current in line Z2 is 42.04 into 1000 by 800 that is 52.55 amps. Then transmitted current in line Z3 is 42.04 into 1000 by 200 that is 210.2 amps. Line terminated through a capacitance. So we will consider here that DC surge of infinite line travels over the line of surge impedance Z and it, and it is incident on the capacitor as shown in the figure. We are interested in finding out the voltage across the capacitor that is the refracted voltage. So refracted voltage we can write from equation 9, 12.9. That is V double dash is 2 Vr by Z plus R. So 2 Vr by Z plus R. Now V double dash S of S is 2 into 1 by Cs divided by Z plus 1 by Cs that is into V by S that is 2 V by S into 1 by Z Cs plus 1. 2V R is equal to 2V by S into 1 by ZC by S plus 1 by ZC. That 2V if I take common, it will come as 1 by S minus 1 by S plus 1 by ZC. V double dash of T is 2V into 1 minus E power minus T by ZC. So variation of voltage is shown in this uh, B figure. Since terminating impedance is not a transmission line, therefore V, v double dash of S is not a traveling wave, but it is the voltage across capacitor C. Capacitor connection at a T. Voltage across capacitor is given by the equation V double dash of S is equal to 2V by Z1S by 1 by Z1 plus 1 by Z2 plus Cs that is 2V Z2 by S into 1 by Z1 Z2C divided by Z1 plus Z2 by Z1 Z2C plus S. That is 2V by S Z1C into 1 by S plus Z1 plus Z2 by Z1 Z2C. Uh, let we can uh, write here alpha as Z1 plus Z2 by Z1 Z2C. Then V double dash of S can be written as 2V by S into 1 by Z1C divided by S plus alpha. V double dash of S can be written as uh, 2V by S into Z2 by Z1 plus Z2 into Z1 plus Z2 by Z1 Z2C by S plus alpha. Or it can be written as 2V Z2 by Z1 plus Z2 into 1 by S minus 1 by S plus alpha. That is equal to 2V by 2V Z2 by Z1 plus Z2 into 1 minus exponential minus of Z1 plus Z2 by Z1 Z2C into D. So variation of the wave is shown in the figure. So we have assumed uh, in the derivation of the expression for voltage across the capacitor that traveling surge is of infinite length. Let us now derive the expression when surge is of finite duration say tau. Also let the magnitude of this wave be V units. So wave can be decomposed into two waves now f of t equal to v of v into u of t minus v into u of t minus tau v of v into u minus t minus tau is v for t, t greater than or equal to tau and it is equal to 0 for t less than tau with this voltage across the capacitor is given as v double dash of s is equal to laplace transform of f of t 2z that is uh, 2 by z1 by 1 by z1 plus 1 by z2 plus cs equal to 2v by z1 s divided by 1 by z1 plus 1 by z2 plus cs that is uh, minus 2V by Z1S into E power minus tau S by 1 by Z1 plus 1 by Z2 plus Cs. V double dash, double dash of T equal to 2V into Z2 by Z1 plus Z2 into 1 minus exponential minus of Z1 plus Z2 by Z1 Z2C into T. 
माइनस टू वी जेड टू बाई जेड वन प्लस जेड टू इंटू वन माइनस एक्सपोनशियल माइनस ऑफ जेड वन प्लस जेड टू बाई जेड वन जेड टू सी इंटू टी माइनस टॉ वेरिएशन ऑफ वोल्टेज इज शोन इन द फिगर दैट इज अक्रॉस द कैपेसिटर विद फाइनाइट ड्यूरेशन इंसिडेंट सर्च एंड फॉर टाइम T lying between zero and tau, only the first term in the expression is active, and for t greater than or equal to tau, both the terms are active. So rise in the voltage is maximum at t equal to tau when the value will be v double dash of t is 2v z2 by z1 plus z2 into 1 minus exponential minus z1 plus z2 by z1 z2 c tau minus 2v z2 by z1 plus z2 into 1 minus e power zero. So this the entire value will become zero. So remaining will be only left hand side. So it is clear that the attenuation in the magnitude of voltage for a short wave is much more rapid than for long wave. So we have seen that the effect of a shunt capacitor is to reduce the steepness and magnitude of the wave reaching an equipment. Since an inductor is dual to a capacitor, an inductor in series of the line should give the same effect. Let us see a numerical. A 500 kilovolt to microsecond rectangular surge on a line having a surge impedance of 350 ohms approaches a station at which the concentrated earth capacitance is 3000 picofarad. Determine the maximum value of the transmitted wave. So this is a diagram for a corresponding problem. Ma maximum value of voltage value E double dash is 2e into 1 minus exponential minus tau by zc. Substitute all the values. We are going to get this as 2 into 500 into 1 minus e power minus 1.9, or 2 into 500 into 1 minus 0 0.015. That is 850 kilovolt. Thank you everyone for watching the video. Now give your attendance in comment section. Thank you everyone.